when I was a kid. Uh, we'd get a big rainstorm ditch, fill up with water. We'd be playing in the ditch, playing in the rain, that kind of stuff. Are you going to be able to allow or let your kids do that in the future? How do you picture this parish? And is it a vision of prosperity, cleanliness? Sooner or later, this problem has to be tackled. It's expensive today. It's not going to get cheaper tomorrow. And that's another thing about our parish. When we see a problem, we tackle it. And coming up with some kind of a, a, a plan that everybody can support, we want to do the right thing. We want to do things that make sense, and it's going to make our community better. How today is sewage processed in Ascension Parish? Well, you have multiple uh, scenarios with that. Uh, starting off with the basics from houses that have been here for a long time, as simple as a septic tank with a filter bed. Uh, the old method that's been around for many, many moons, right? Uh, to back in the, I believe it was in the late 70s, early 80s, sometime they went to the MoDAD technology, which is a little bit different design tank with an aerator on it. Uh, and then also to the community system, some of the older community systems that we have, uh, as well as the newer subdivisions that are in the area, or whether it be businesses with their own personal treatment plant, which is typically some type of aeration type system, uh, is what they're mostly uh, the way they process or their technology, if you will, of how they, how they process the waste before it's disposed of into our local ditches and waterways. Mm -hmm. The current system is obviously, it's broken. I guess with age, some of these systems wear out or, you know, this hodgepodge, if you will. It's a, it's a numerous things. It's from not having aerators on on the MODADs or not being properly cleaned out every three, four, five years, you're supposed to have those, those tanks pumped out to make to keep them optim, uh, at their optimized levels of solid waste in there because not all of it goes off the bugs basically it's a it's a bug digesting the waste and there's still solids left over after that and some of that is light enough that it gets transposed out or transferred out into the ditches and the water streams but a lot of it settles to the bottom of the tanks it could be a lot of dead bugs once they get full and die they sink to the bottom of those systems and so it becomes sludge and that sludge as it grows in the bottom of those tanks has less hold up time in those tanks so you, you become less and less effective you have to have a couple of things to make your system function properly and one is the optimized uh, nutrients and optimized bug life because as the bugs get older they don't they're not as efficient as what they used to be but you also have to waste off solids and, and, and those things in order to keep enough hold up time in the tanks to where the bugs have time to do what they're there to do. And then on top of that as we we get more and more citizens, more and more businesses in the parish, we are putting more and more stuff into our ditches and waterways. So in order to control the amount of nutrients, the amount of uh, waste and sludge and stuff that we're putting into our waterways, our demands by the state and the federal government becomes more and more. We get more stringent on their levels of contaminants, the level of things that can come out of those systems that, that are put into our waterways. So it's kind of a dual thing. It's not only that the systems aren't necessarily functioning to their capacity or to their, to their uh, level of design and their age and they're just not working anymore, but it's also the fact that as we grow as a community and as a parish, we're putting more and more demands on our system and so therefore because we don't have uh, the carrying case of capabilities in those streams to carry this waste off downstream then it becomes more and more contaminated and so therefore when DEQ and, and those guys look at what our levels are in the parish they're wanting to keep those levels down because of that fact we're loading the system up more than what it realistically can handle. It sounds like even regardless of design and new technology you can't just buy a system install it and ignore it you know it, it's that's right some, there's some maintenance there's some attention that is required over uh, time. even even routine exactly i mean even a system such as a septic tank on someone's house even though there's no mechanical uh devices there nothing involved with it other than you flush your toilet the, the waste goes into the tank and then it goes you know it sits there for a period of time the heavy stuff settles out and the, the, the water 
cleaner water goes out through the, the pipe to the sewage ditch, even that has to be sucked out every so often in order to keep that at its optimum uh, level. And so you have the same thing with the MODADs. Now you're starting to introduce mechanical aspects to it with the aerators, and so those have to be working and, and, and pumping. And then you get into the larger subdivision systems where you have pumps and motors and those type of things, whether it be compressors or just uh, pumps that pump the liquid around. Those things have to be kept up. There's maintenance on it and those type of things. So the bigger the system, the more maintenance you have. Are we doing a good enough job doing maintaining them? While you can't put a blanket answer on that, uh, in general, if you talk to the folks at DEQ, uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, whether it's people not running their MODADs or running their aerators on the MODADs or pumping out their septic tanks or both, or the, the subdivision systems, the larger treatment systems, not doing what they need to do uh, through whatever reason uh, being, then as a whole, yes, we are not doing what we need to do. There are some in Ascension Parish who are properly maintaining their sewer systems. So why should they worry about parish-wide sewer improvements? The reality, unfortunately, is there are so many who are not properly managing their sewage disposal, the issue has evolved from one of sewage management to one of environmental protection and public health and safety, something that affects us all. So it's, it's a health hazard, you know, and that's one of the things we pointed out too in some of the public meetings that we've had. You know, West Nile's a big concern. Well, we've always got standing water in our ditches because we're constantly putting water in our ditches. It doesn't have to rain because we're putting water out of our septic tanks into those ditches. So that's water, contaminated water, for mosquitoes to breed in. Uh, your kids playing in the front yard, playing ball, the ball goes in the ditch. They go and get it out of there. Your pets drinking water out of those ditches, potentially. Walking through them, bringing that stuff back in your house. My goal is to engage people in conversation and try to get them to the same area that I am and come to close to the same decision that I've come to. We can all agree or disagree on how to get there, but in the end, what do we want? And I think that's the big question. In the end, do we want a clean environment that we don't have to worry about our kids and our pets? We don't want to worry, have to worry about whether or not when it floods or we get water out of those ditches, canals, what's in them. Uh, we don't want to worry about uh, the camps that we have, the fish, the crawfish, and different things that we may go out and do and stuff that we enjoy. Are they healthy for us? I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, the old Tickfall River out there in Independence that they shut it down because of fecal coliform. I don't know how close we are to that, but if we don't start taking some positive steps to limit that, then sooner or later we're going to run into those things. But we do have a lot of waterways. We do have a lot of people that use our waterways for recreation, whether it be fishing and skiing, boating, you know, and, and food, fish and crawfish, you know, whatever. So those things are issues for us. Some of those waterways are already that, that bad here in Ascension Parish. And not just waterways, but I mean, you don't have to go far down this street. No. To a ditch Yeah. that that water's not clean. That's, I mean. During the summertime, how many times do you walk outside and we're kind of used to it. My sense of smell isn't all that good, but you're kind of used to it. I, you know, talking to a few people, it's like, man, I ride down the road and I smell it. You know, since we've started this conversation, since we've started this, this discussion dialogue back, uh, to the forefront of, of the community, you know, the few, there's a few people that I talk to that, you know, I, I hear those kind of comments. What I want is hopefully folks to look at this from an open and honest perspective and because what, what I believe that you do with the situation, what I've learned through my life in problem solving is first, can I identify the problem? And I think we have. I think it doesn't take uh, much for folks to go outside and look in the ditch uh, and come to a realization whether it's the ditch in their front or backyard or whether it's a ditch down the street whether it's local bayou or creek or uh, bayou manchac new river uh, you know and name all the waterways within the parish to have either some kind of an odor some kind of growth some kind of sludge in the bottom of that ditch that we couldn't sit there and say that if our waste streams didn't go into that we wouldn't have that there 
And so that kind of identifies the problem. So then, then you get to the bigger dynamic of how do you resolve that problem. And even the bigger problem with that is how do you fund it? And that's where we have to have this dialogue and that's where we have to have a conversation about are we to the point as a community to where we're willing to, to wrap our hands around this thing and say, yeah, it's time for us to do something with it. I don't necessarily want parish government to take on anything we don't have to take on uh, because it requires money from our citizens and basically wanted to look at this and see if there's a way to come up with an answer that we can all live with uh, that solves our problem. Highway 73 is being widened between the interstate and airline highway. One of the things that DOTD has required us to do is put a sewer line down because they're trying to minimize their cost and instead of doing open ditches they're doing curb and gutter streets which requires us to put a sewer treatment line in. Same thing with Highway 42. So one of the bigger discussions that was held 20, 25 years ago is where do you start? Well that's already been decided for us. That gets that political argument out of the way. And so with that, our concept is, is let's take what we've already got in the ground, what we've already been ordered, if you will, to put them, that in service, and what can we do to help our citizens out? So our facilities plan that was put together for us identifies that area, general area between the interstate and airline on Highway 73 is P16. Well, our plan, we call it for phase one, is a modified P16 area, which our proposal is to run a treatment line from the parish line down Airline Highway from Bayou Man Shack 273. We can accomplish two things by that. Number one, we can connect the Highway 42 and 73 lines together, and instead of putting two separate treatment plants in, temporary treatment plants in, we can hopefully combine those and put them in one spot, as well as open up a large commercial area. The next, or the rest of the phase of that, is to run a line down Highway 73 from the interstate to around the river. DQ says they want us putting this stuff in the Mississippi River like we talked about. And so that does a couple of things for us. If we can find some property in that area, it gets us away from residences, which hopefully gets us away from complaints and different things along those lines, but it gets us closer to our industrial uh, partners that we can hopefully sell that water to uh, and gives us that trunk line from there which opens up even more customers to be able to be connected to the system. To cover the cost for the modified P16 sewer improvements, DEQ will loan Ascension Parish $60 million. This pays for the first step, the foundation, in what will become a parish-wide sewer improvement plan for Ascension. We understand that nobody wants to pay more taxes and we understand what, where you're at with these dynamics. It helps them out, but it helps us out as well. And when the thing I said earlier about nobody wanting to throw money at us, they're not giving it to us, but you're not getting, a, you know, you're not paying four, five, six, seven percent either. You're paying less than one percent. Hopefully, we can get that going in a short period of time, show that win to the public, show them what we're trying to do, what to what level we're trying to do, win that confidence. While, along while we're having the rest of this conversation and coming up with some kind of a, a plan that everybody can support, we want to do the right thing. We want to do things that make sense. We want to do things that, uh, that you can get behind as an average citizen and say, yeah, we've done this. And, and it's something that we can support. And it's going to make our community better in the long run. Ascension has been very fortunate and blessed to have an incredible amount of growth. There's future growth that we're talking about. Well, in that growth, there's a requirement that we should have to do the right thing with the way, with how we approach waste treatment and water issues, you know, uh, development issues, and, 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 and any other aspect of that growth brings on. So the relationship with those organizations is just great. I, you know, I just recently had a meeting with DHH, and, and we talked about some of the things that we needed to do. It was a very engaging uh, um, conversation. 
and they want to work with us. They did the, the, they work well with us on the 73 project. They're working well with us on the Highway 42 project, and uh, and DEQ uh, as as some discussions and what happened in our recent meetings have been working well with us of giving us an opportunity to acquire a 66 million dollar loan that will build the first phase of a regional treatment plant in the dense area of Ascension Parish, uh, where initially we didn't have that. Today is really a great day for one primary reason. It's been three years in the making, and it's because of a great collaborative effort. And for the collaboration, um, I would be remiss if I don't start with your parish president, the CEO of Ascension Parish, the Honorable Tommy Martinez. Ms. President, um, I want to say that um, your advocacy for Ascension Parish, um, your diligence, um, to some degree, some may say very aggressive, but fully understandable because you do it on behalf of your parish. In addition to uh, President Martinez, Ken Dawson, I want to pull uh, this young man out. Um, <clears throat> I've known Ken for quite a while, but in his capacity as the Chief Administrative Officer, I will say this, I have not met a gentleman that really understands the vision of the CEO, the vision of the council, and works diligently with me. I've had Benny Johnson, Chairman of the Utilities Committee, all the members of the Utilities Committee, uh, Chairman Chris Lohr uh, with the council. Again, um, your president always reminds me that today would not have been possible without that collaboration. And that was really manifested when that resolution was passed as part of the pre-application submission where every single member was in full support of this. And the biggest piece is in the times when you look at raising fees and taxes, always such a burden on the residents of our state, this parish found the fortitude, found the budget from within in order to make and request this loan on behalf of water sewer infrastructure. And for us, that was a very big deal. And I know the residents of this parish appreciate that. This is a great first step, as Alex said. As the carpenters say, we've only just begun because this is a, the, the beginning of a long process to get the wastewater treatment collection system in line. Uh, it will both help the economic development of the parish and the environmental protection. So we do appreciate all the work, and I know it's been hard and long, and there's a lot more work to be done. Path forward. Today's a cautionary note. The purpose of today is really saying that we have provided preliminary approval to that $60 million request for wastewater upgrades, and it's in the collection system lines. What that means, and the reason it's a preliminary approval, because now we really get to the real work where your engineers, your financial folks get to work with my engineers on the environmental side, on the engineering side, and on the financial side. It's a process that typically takes anywhere up to 12 months to get to the next milestone, which really is the big deal, and that will be the loan closing phase. And uh, President Martinez has assured me, and I sense that passion and aggression that he's demonstrating, 12 months is the rule of thumb. President Martinez assures me that he will push everybody on his side of the equation to make sure that everything is in place, that we can close on the loan in less than 12 months. And that's the time when the secretary and I will be back, and the secretary gets to present what we call our big symbolic check. But really behind that closing is the fact that we would actually have signed on the dotted line that Ascension Parish in 12 months or less will have access to those $60 million to start, as the proverbial term goes, turning dirt, starting the actual construction phase. That $60 million allows you to establish a huge footprint in a sewer treatment plant on East Bank. Does it solve the whole problem? No, it doesn't. But it's a significant first step. Our, our philosophy is not just to look at how we uh, just treat waste. We want to make sure that we meet standards that, uh, that would take us beyond what could be imposed later. So what we're looking at is gray water standards. Why should we look at gray water standards? Which, by the way, there are already um, um, legislation on the books that talks about treating wastewater to that particular standard. So our goal is that since we have a, a, a large amount of industry here, why not process this wastewater to a standard that that water could be used as process water for industry? It just makes sense. That was a project done in North Louisiana. 
A paper mill was in the drinking water aquifers that use a massive amount of water. Um, that community got together and they looked at a project that would treat the wastewater to a level and to a standard that that paper mill could use it as process water. So how did everybody win? The plant got the process water they needed that was provided by the parish. That plant then pulled out of the aquifers, the drinking water aquifers, for the people of that area, so it extended the life of those aquifers for, for, uh, for a number and number of years. So it just makes sense, and we're doing that. Another thing we're looking at in Extension Parish, we're going to take the actual sludge, and uh, we're going to treat the pathogens by a certain means, by heat or some type, or maybe by adding lime, but utilizing that to see how we can use that, use that as fertilizer. But what does that do? Well, if we use that as fertilizer, we're not sending sludge to a landfill, okay, which is good environmentally. Secondly, we're saving money for the parish because we're not having to pay for that to be hauled to the landfill. So the kind of things that just make sense, we want to approach this, since we are doing it kind of for the first time, we have the opportunity to look at technology and means that kind of sets us uh, above the scale, and we're looking at things that will put us in a position that we don't have any issues for years to come. The battle is not going to be for oil and gas in the future. It's going to be for water resources. That is going to be the key concern. We're in a commercial area. We have a, a huge industrial footprint in our parish compared to relative to our other parishes around us. So we started thinking, if we can turn around instead of spending all these millions of dollars to build this system and treat this waste, and just dump it over into the Mississippi River with this huge industrial footprint that we have. How about if we partner with our industrial corporations, sell them this water, instead of taking a, a, what I call a negative and turning it into a positive, instead of just dumping it over into the river after we spent all this money getting it here and treating it and just putting it in the river to watch it go bye-bye, let's sell it to these guys if they're willing to partner with us. It's not going to pay for the operation of the plant, it's not going to pay for the operation of the system, but every bit coming back into it is a, le is, a, is a penny less that I have to come out of my pocket with on monthly fees or revenue source, some other kind of revenue source stream. It's, I think it's widely known. Sewer, there's not money in sewer. It's, it's, it's very cost prohibitive. It's, it costs you a lot to, to maintain the systems. It costs you a lot to, to build them and, and, and do what you have to do with but it. But if in the process you <coughs> create something that's But if that's in celibate. the process we can take that negative and turn it into a positive by partnering with our industrial folks and selling that water to them that they can use in their processes. They don't have to operate a clarifier or can minimize the operation of their clarifiers, which saves them operational cost and there's less water that they're pulling out of the river or pulling out of the, or the, the, the freshwater aquifers and those type of things just to use it through the processes and clean it up and dump it back in the river. So that's a positive. If this system goes large enough parish-wide, we'll save money on the amount of times we'll have to dig ditches out. I don't want to impact anybody any more than what we absolutely have to, and that's part of the goal, is to minimize the impact. But again, have a common sense discussion about how do we resolve these issues, what could be solutions to them, and then how do we pay for it? And how do we do it within a, one of the things that we've talked about in our presentations, uh, we talk about uh, different revenue sources to cover this. We've already mentioned that it's about a $750 million problem, and that's a rough estimate. How can we generate, besides taxing people, is there any other way that we can generate revenue to where we don't have to go to some astronomical monthly fee that people may or may not be able to afford? So how do we keep it down to a level where all of us can afford to do things and, and solve our problem? Because the one thing's for sure, back 20, 25 years ago, they were talking about $350 million to do today, what we're talking about $750 million to do. So it's not going to get cheaper. And while I, I'm not one to sit here and say uh, uh, we got to do something today, we got to do something today, uh, give me all your money, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what any of us are saying. What we are saying is let's have an open discussion, let's talk, let's come up with what we believe to be the right solutions, and we've got a path, we've got a plan forward, like the, the, the uh, reclaim water standard. Uh, like solid waste disposal off of the treatment plants that we build that we can 
uh, one of the unique things about that as well is we can we can pelletize that and sell that to farmers for fertilizer. Again, it's a little bit. It's not a lot. And so if you if you consistently waste to keep your system operating optimally and you turn around and you put in what they call a belt press to get the water out of it and you turn around and you invest a little bit of money in that belt press and you invest a little bit of money in a pelletizer and then you turn around and you sell that eventually you'll pay for that equipment plus turn around and make that into a profit that you can put towards your operating and maintenance of that facility just like with the reclaimed water it's going to cost me a little bit more to get to that standard but over the long haul if I maintain that standard it's going to give me plenty of time before DEQ comes in and says you're not treating to a certain level and then I can turn around and so that gives me money that I don't have to turn around and then reinvest in these plants almost year in year out to, to upgrade to what DEQ says we need to be at uh, so that gives you time to allow a return on investment to pay for this stuff and to keep your rates low for example uh, Lake Charles just did a retrofit on their treatment plants and that's kind of one that we went uh, we just didn't want to go to these treatment facilities and see what the latest and greatest was we, want, we wanted to see how they operate uh, so we went to Lake Charles, we looked at uh, the technology they've installed out there to uh, run their plant. And that's where we kind of started looking at that, that system there. But they also had that same system installed about 15, 16 years ago in uh, Homa. So it's like, well, let's go take a look at that one, see what kind of trouble there. Not only talk to the guys that designed it and built it, but let's talk to the guys that's operating it. Let's see what it takes for them to operate these things. How labor intensive is it? How demanding is it? How expensive is it? Chemical wise and all these other things that you have within these systems. We went to a couple of towns in, in Mississippi and looked at some different technologies. Uh, we've got a different technology, Lamar Dixon, that we looked at. But you don't have to go very far to look at a community that was basically in the same shoes that we are uh, down around uh, St. Tammany Parish that they were basically in the same bit shoes we are and how they're trying to grow their system and we've, we've had some folks talk to them we've talked to people who have talked to them and we don't need to reinvent the wheel we want to learn from their mistakes we want to learn from their trials and their tribulations we our neighbors up to the north of us in baton rouge we want to learn from the situations that they've dealt with with their systems and the problems that they've had we don't want to set ourselves up for failure we want to have those kind of conversations that say, can I do something today? Do I have the revenue sources, which is always going to be the big thing, to make the decision today to do things like that that make sense into the future that I don't cause us to have to pay to make this $750 million system go to $1.3, $1.4 billion because I didn't make smart, sound financial decisions today. You have limitations and we want to work within those limitations, but we want to make an educated decision. Making educated decisions, Ascension Parish has a history of doing that. Major flood events in the late 70s and early 80s prompted a group of citizens known as the Sandbaggers to seek out a solution, formulate a plan, and rally the community to support a tax dedicated to paying for a widespread flood protection system, including the Marvin Bro pump station and the Henderson Bayou floodgate and control structure. The sandbaggers were ordinary citizens who saw the need for a better way to fight flooding, worked together, and through their vision, their action, extraordinary solutions were carried out. Our citizenship is demanding more out of government as far as, you know, don't just come to me and ask me for something. We, we want more than that. And, and, but what we have done, and you brought up a very good example, is with drainage. Because we've got people here that years ago saw a need advanced an idea and got buy-in from the citizenship to support that. Um, you know, and you can go on down the line several things. Uh, and we have, a, we have an, an, uh, one of the things that I'm proud of being a part of in the past in the fire service in this parish is, you know, we have some things that we have done as a, a, a parish, as a community, that has never been done anywhere in this country before. And it's been done by people that have basically put their head together and said, what if? You had the old days where guys would go out there and take old gasoline hauling trucks and clean them up and, and do whatever, and all of a sudden that's tank trucks hauling water uh, and save residents 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, millions of dollars in reality, and some of the things that were done when fire departments really first start, started getting going in the parish. But even better than that is we, we all of a sudden became aware of this thing called Property Insurance Association that gave us fire ratings that controlled what we pay on an annual basis for homeowners insurance. And all that we were required to do was about 250 gallons a minute, if I remember correctly. One person asked, can we do more? We went to 1,000 gallons a minute. But what did that do for us? That got us from a class nine fire rating to a class five. No water system, no paid firemen. Never been done in the state before. And we've been able to maintain that. And just by a handful of people putting their heads together and working as a team, our mental health system has, is another one. Um, you know, we have a mental health system. We're one of the few parishes. I think there's only two or three in the state that actually have a functioning mental health system since the state started reducing budgets. And that's what I hope to try to accomplish with this. I hope that we can have that same type of, of uh, buy-in through education and through getting you know common work, common understanding with folks to come in and say, it's a problem, we need to solve the problem, and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be something that, that's an easy pill to swallow, as we've talked about in the past. It's going to hurt. It's going to cost you money. It's not going to, you know, it's not something to all roses and, and smelling good flowers and stuff. It's a tough problem, and it's not cheap. One thing that we're looking at from the parish standpoint is that any possible revenue source that we could gain and bring in, uh, we're going to do so to maximize that so that there would be the least amount of cost that will be passed on to the public. Everything flows from north to south or north to east, west kind of thing. And so even though that's coming there, you may not have a system in the dynamics of it is you want to take care of what the problem is. But this is where everybody would benefit because the folks on the bottom end of those systems, if I clean it up up here, they're going to see the benefits in the waterways around their residence that's cleaner. And we have a lot of people that use our waterways. So it, it became an environmental issue for us. We want to focus in on the environment. We want to focus in to say it's not about the development. It's not about the growth. There's some things that, that all that uh, touches uh, because it's one of the things I did learn that when you start talking about sewer, it's not just, okay, we'll put a treatment plant here and it's done. I mean, it, it affects a lot of different things. It's, it's a huge endeavor. There's many, many f things that would be going on at one time with this. So that's how I got to where I am. That's why I believe that we need to do something with this. That's why I am willing to go out there and talk to people, engage them in these kind of conversations, and try to get an understanding of what their expectations are, what, what they're willing to tolerate, uh, and, and how can we move this forward. One of the things we discovered from a very high level is that we're talking about $750 million to build a comprehensive system on the east side of the parish. That's not 100% inclusive. That is a comprehensive system that covers, we're estimating, somewhere up to about 75 to 85% of the, the populace of the parish. But you have concerns. I can't build a, if I can look at the east side of the parish today, look at our population and say that we need a 20 million gallon a day treatment facility. But I can't build a 20 million gallon a day treatment facility if I'm only putting one to two million gallons a day to it. It's not going to function. So what we wanted to do is we want to do things smartly by saying I want to build a plant that has a small footprint so I don't need much property, but it's expandable. I want to do things that the people can hopefully get behind and say uh, treatment level. It's not enough to go in there and put a, a plant to today's treatment specs and then turn around four or five years from now and have to spend a ton of money upgrading it to what the latest and greatest treatment specs are going to be. Let's try to get a little bit ahead of that. There are other folks that are out there that, you know, my system's working fine, leave me alone. 
and there's the folks that are in the subdivision, hey, I'm paying my monthly fees to the operator of my system and I'm not contributing to that. And while I can't sit there and, and, and with, and have a, I can have a legitimate discussion with those folks to say, okay, look, while what you're doing may be right, there's no doubt about that. There are individuals that are out there in the parish that are doing right and doing what they need to do and taking care of their business. There's enough of us that are out there that is not, that it's affecting everybody. And even what you're doing that's right, if it's the guy with the, the septic tank, even to that level, when you start taking the latest numbers that I've heard, somewhere around 55% of the, the households in the parish are not in subdivisions, 55, 60%, somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So if 55, 60% of the individual homes like what I have, whether it's a MoDAD that's operating properly or not, there's enough nutrients being put out of our systems that if they're operating, it's still causing a negative effect to the environment. We are discharging into areas that are impaired. An impairment of an area kind of means that you're going to start to use some of the use of that waterway. So it could get to a point where you know you can't eat any fish, anything that comes out of it, or that nobody could even use it for recreation. So we can't we can no longer just sit back and say that uh, um, we we don't need to do anything. We have to be very proactive. There are streams that are already impaired in, in Ascension Parish. What we have to do is that we have to be proactive in in moving forward aggressively with this because to affect the future. Uh, is to have a bunch of signs that in our waterways that say no fishing and no swimming. What kind of legacy is that for the future? We have an obligation, I feel, of the older generation, so to speak, that the quality of life that we enjoyed, we should want to, pr to pass that on to our children and grandchildren. If we don't, I think that this generation is failing the future. So, I mean, the easy way out is to say that Hey, my waste is taken care of. Oh, this is not going to be uh, anything I have to deal with because I'm going to be gone long before it's a problem. Well, to me, that's not responsibility. I think being responsible is to say that, look, I realize that, that this is where we are now, and I'm part of a problem that I need to be, uh, to be involved in finding that solution. The problem, I promise you, will not go away. So what we have to do is to aggressively approach it, realize that, you know what, you may, we may have to put some money toward it and we may have to make some investment to get it done, but the goal of this is going to be is a better quality of life in Ascension Parish. That's what we're about and that's what we should be about. We have the resources, we've been, we, we're, we're fortunate and, and we're, we're blessed in Ascension to have a lot of resources at our disposal that we can utilize to solve it. It's going to take some commitment from the citizens to say that, hey, I'm willing to make some investment in that. But I think that what you're going to see over the next year to year and a half is a $60 million project that's going to provide something that the, that the, the people of Ascension will say, this is great. Keep in mind. It's not just a, a, a treatment issue, a waste treatment issue we have in this engine. We have a traffic issue. And we say that we may want state dollars to help us do so. Unless we're able to put sewer pipe in the ground, we will not be able to do it. The parish is already committed about $9 million in, 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 in combination to the 73 project and the, and the 42 project. We are going to have to handle this no matter what. And it's time that we say, you know what? Our kids are worth it. Our grandkids are worth it. This parish is worth it, and let's just get it done. And I think that when we all stand up after and take a deep breath, when we look at what has been built, we will say, this is good. It's all about the environment, in my opinion. It's not about the state or the feds coming in here and saying, you got to do this because it's nasty, it's a health hazard, and all this other kind of stuff. What do you picture? And I guess this is what I would ask anybody. How do you picture this parish from an environmental standpoint of view, from your, not the plants, not all this other stuff, but when you walk out of your door in the morning or in the afternoon and you want your kids to play in the yard, it's all about a vision. And what do you want that vision to be? And is it a vision of prosperity? Is it a vision of cleanliness? And if those the answer to those two is yes, then sooner or later this problem has to be tackled. 
the later we wait, the further we kick this problem down the road. Uh, it, you know, I, it's expensive today. It's not going to get cheaper tomorrow. There's nobody out there willing to throw money at us today to say, you know, here, go build your system. You know, we'll take care of you. Uh, and that's another thing about our parish. When it comes down to it, when we see a problem, we tackle it. We get there. We do what we need to do. And hopefully we'll, that's one thing that as people come into the parish and people start experiencing what Ascension Parish is about, that's one thing that I hope that they join in with. This is a need. And how much how much do you how much do you take? What does it take for us to get into motion? Because this is such a large problem, we don't necessarily as individuals see that but in reality, so it becomes our issue or our concern to educate people to get this dialogue going to have this conversation this is one of those things that we feel the need I feel the need very strongly that how can I go out there and have these kind of conversations with people and it's not all about what I want to hear it's not about what I think needs to be done it's what can we come up with as an organ as a group parish government along with the community can get behind and support and start working on. We're on the verge in this parish of a lot of great things. I think we I truly believe that. I think we're on the verge of a lot of great things. If things come together the way we the stuff that I've seen, that I would like to see it come. And, and again, this is just me. Hopefully a, a lot of folks can see that vision or see what I'm seeing uh, and learn what I'm, I've learned through the last five, six years that I've been on this council, um, that expectation, that satisfaction, that um, joy of accomplishment that I and others felt when we went through that growth together in the fire service and achieved that thousand gallon flow on that shuttle operation and went from a class nine to a class five fire rating. It's pride and but it's something, not just me, it's the whole group, the whole organization, the whole parish. It's something that hopefully we can all feel pride in. That instead of us going to look at other folks, we got folks coming to look at us. How did y'all do this? How did y'all accomplish this? That's what makes it worthwhile to work through. When Not me going out there telling you how great I am, because it's not about that. It's about us doing something, working as a group, as a community, putting our heads together, solving this problem, and then other folks coming in, looking at what we've done, and saying, you guys did it right.